Amazon's The Rings of Power is an enormous opportunity missed, but it is something that can maybe be retrieved. They allegedly sunk a billion dollars into this project, and there's so much they could have done with the world of Tolkien with only a little imagination. The more I watch The Rings of Power, the more I get upset at the difference between what Amazon could have done and what Amazon actually did. Because there's so much that Amazon could have done with this series. They wanted more representation, and I get that. They made that abundantly and tediously clear with the promotional material. They could have had the representation, easily, while still being law-friendly and true to Tolkien's work. The way Tolkien wrote the Southerns in the source material, I think he was trying to evoke Africa. Near Harad, where they set the Southlands in the Rings of Power, was supposed to be arid, with harsh, beating sun, kind of like the area around the Sahara Desert. I'm envisaging a place much like Libya, Egypt or Algeria, where people clustered near water sources and the sea. These places could have provided a rich source of inspiration for the show. I can't get enough of the architecture in that part of the world. It is, after all, notoriously Moorish. The people living in near Harad were characterised by Tolkien as being swarthy. If you don't know, the word swarthy comes from a very old English word schwart, meaning black. But it doesn't mean black like, say, Peter Mensa. It comes from a proto-Germanic word schwart, so it seems to share a root with the current German word schwarz, meaning black in German. In English, it refers more to dark hair and eye colour as well as maybe a slightly darker complexion. The olive complexion, like you'd find in Italy, Spain, or not. Swarthy in English is not really a racial thing. It could and is used as a descriptor for Caucasian people as well. Someone like, say, a Richard Armitage. People in England probably wouldn't look at you strangely if you said, Richard Armitage is swarthy and he's from Leicester. Well, maybe some young people would ask, Oh my God, Joe, what does swarthy mean in it? But some of them are barely speaking English at this point, so they don't count. Also, they can't count. Farharad is described as being a thick jungle. The people who live there are described as very dark skinned. So I think Tolkien was envisaging a landscape more like the Democratic Republic of Congo, or more like Central Africa as inspiration. In the Peter Jackson films, they allegedly took inspiration from the Aztecs and Pacific Kiribati tribes for their depiction of the people of Far Harad. The Easterlings were not very fleshed out at all in the source material. Amazon could have made them inspired by the Middle East, or Persia, or China. They kind of had a Persian-y feel in the Peter Jackson films, armoured with shield, spear and bow. They're kind of like the Persian immortals. The Variags as well were also kind of a blank slate. But Tolkien being a linguist, it would seem that they're inspired by the Norse or Slavic peoples. Variag, after all, is a Slavic word derived from the Norse word Valindja, allegedly meaning mercenary people. The Russians even had a cruiser named Variak or Varangian in English, built for the Russian navy Strangely, it was built in Philadelphia and launched in 1899, but that's another story entirely. What are these people's stories, and how did they end up marching with Sauron? Did they all back him? Did all the Easterlings back Sauron, and if so, why? What was their perspective on what happened? Were they forced? Were they true believers? Did some fight back? Did some resist? It would have allowed for spectacular visuals of these different landscapes and the cultures that lived there. I was always interested in who these fascinating looking people were in the Peter Jackson films. The people of Harad, Far Harad, the Easterlings, the Variags. Amazon could have got all the diversity they wanted from these groups of people, while still being entirely law friendly. Instead. Amazon covered the Southlands and near Harad, and in terms of scenery, it looks like Hobbiton and the north of the continent, with green rolling hills. Where instead you could have had a mysterious desert, Egyptian style monuments, maybe Sphinx, maybe pyramids, thriving markets. It's not like Africa is short on inspiration for you, Amazon. Amazon could have based the people of the Southlands on the ancient people of Mali, Nigeria, 
the Maasai, the Zulus, the ancient Ethiopians. It would have been fine if you'd done it respectfully, but what am I saying? They couldn't even do Tolkien respectfully. All that culture you could have drawn on, and it's almost endless, and you set it in a medieval style English village. Instead the people are mostly white, with northern English accents. Is this what diversity is to you Amazon? To carry on pretending that Africa doesn't exist, but you will give us an elf of colour. So yes, the more I watch this series, the more I get upset at the difference between what Amazon could have done and what Amazon did, and all the potential they wasted. They put diversity into a piece of work that already had it. In fact, they removed the diversity that was there and replaced it instead with tokenization. Though in retrospect, it may be for the best that Amazon didn't try and do something more ambitious, seeing as they managed to screw up Galadriel so badly, and that was a character that had already been written for them by J.R.L. Tolkien. And she was pretty universally loved as well until this series. When Amazon did try and write an original character, they ended up with Plank. So realistically, if they had tried to write a whole civilization, the best we could have hoped for was a city full of planks.